how to get into cloud hacking. So in my personal experience, um, I just started working in, in my previous company, who was a, a startup in a bank startup in the UK. And when they hired me, they told me, I, I, I was just, let's call it a regular pen tester. I, I knew a bunch about web hacking, about Active Directory, red teaming, regular code source review, something that every pen tester should know and something that I think every pen tester starts doing. And then I got this call from this company and they told me that it was going to be a bit different. There wasn't any Active Directory. Their main application was a mobile application. It wasn't a web application. And, and they had everything through cloud, through SaaS application, through identity provider things that I haven't really touched. So I got the opportunity to spend a lot of time learning and researching about SaaS application and cloud. And I also, in the in, in the way, I also forget a lot of stuff about Active Directory because I, I no longer do this stuff. I have also forgot a lot of stuff about Windows, but I have learned a lot about, about MacOS, which is very interesting. Uh, and, and I think we need more pen testing about um, about macOS red teaming, I, I definitely enjoy this. It's, it's very different from, from Windows. So what, what was my initial problem? There isn't a lot of resources. There isn't a lot of people. There isn't even almost CTFs. Now there are more, but a couple of years ago, there wasn't any, I think, talking about cloud pen testing. So my initial idea is, okay, I'm going to do the security specialist certification in, in AWS. That makes sense. I want to do security in AWS and other clouds. So let's start with that. The problem is that at some point I just got bored and abandoned that because it was meant for syst mainly for system administrators and blue team and blue teamers. And it's also true that a red teamer needs to know how things are working to exploit them, how logs are being created and which detection mechanisms mechanisms can be in place to be able to avoid them. But at that point in time, I wanted to learn red teaming. I wanted to learn how to previous, how to do unexpected actions in cloud, uh, how to enumerate, how to how to do red team activities, not blue team activities. So, so um, what I did was to, to learn myself because I couldn't find almost any, I, I couldn't find most out of research about the topic. I learned everything about um, uh, the Reno Labs. They had a lot of really nice, um, they, they stopped doing those, I think, but they had a lot, a lot of really nice write-ups about cloud hacking. And I just started just creating services in clouds, investigating these, their um, permissions, investigating what you can do with them and try to hack them, try to see which permissions you need to do this thing, which things are expected, which things you can do, which you cannot do. And that's the way I, I learned um, that's the way I learned SaaS and cloud hacking. And I wanted to make easier this transition for other pen testers. And that's why I created a hack to X Cloud. Here you can find from base information about how AWS, GCP, Kubernetes, Azure, GitHub, Jenkins, Travis, you say a lot of um, cloud providers and how, how they work from the beginning to very technical stuff of with permissions you exactly need to previsc in DynamoDB and how you can abuse DynamoDB to access um, S3 buckets, to access, um, what else can DynamoDB access? I don't know, it, it could access a lot of stuff. Um, that, that was the idea, to just compile all the, the information I, I could learn and, and put it here. Also, because I have very bad memory and every time do you record your videos? Yes, um, this is going to be recorded and this is going to be put in, in YouTube and Twitch after this. Um, yeah, I have a moderator, so uh, I will let her answer this kind of question. Um, where were we? Yeah, so th there is the main problem with cloud compared potentially to, to maybe Active Directory, to maybe code reviews or web hacking, is that even if those topics are big, Cloud hacking is bigger. It's much, much bigger. Why? Because in AWS, you can ha find hundreds of services 
if service will contain tens of possibilities and you not only need to learn uh, to learn AWS hacking you also need to learn uh, Azure you need to learn GCP you need to learn all the SaaS providers so there are a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of options you can not memorize it's it's better to have them to have them somewhere so that that's that's why I I just created hack to cloud also um in order to make you easier how to start learning I compiled here all the resources I could find for free on the internet to 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 learn about cloud hacking here you can find a lot of free laboratories you can just run and start learning from a, a, a rating perspective from a pen, per, pen testers perspective uh, you have from AWS, for AWS you have for GCP for GCP there, there weren't that, that much to be honest actually GCP is is a field not a lot of people is looking into and I'm, I'm really sure a lot of interesting things are going to be found in there for Azure I'm not sure <laughs> from Azure I'm not sure if I have lots to learn uh, no actually you are going to notice that in these streams, in the YouTube videos, I'm going to be talking a lot about GCP and AWS, but not about Azure. It's not something um, clients I'm working with right now are using. And I just started learning AWS and GCP, and they are enough complex for the moment. So we are going to be learning more about AWS and GCP, and, and GCP than from Azure. But here you can, you can find more information. So for summarize this, in, in Hacktrix Cloud, you are going to be able to find a lot of information about SaaS, about Kubernetes, about cloud provider. They are going to allow you to start learning cloud hacking much, much faster than, than if you need to start from the beginning as, as I did. But never stop reading new write-ups, uh, reading new research about the topic, because every month, some interesting vulnerability appears, something new that you probably didn't think about up here and it's very 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 interesting just learning about the vulnerabilities people is discovering is going to allow you to discover other vulnerabilities or to discover other misconfigurations in in clients that you need to, to pen test also i need you to consider something in in web for example um when you find a vulnerability when you find a sql injection in i don't know a sql injection in, in a tomcat i don't really think that's that's a thing, at least not different directly in, in the Tomcat uh, platform. If you find this vulnerability, people will need to um, update their Tomcat. So this vulnerability is potentially going to be valid to some companies for years. That's very interesting. In cloud, that doesn't happen. If you find a vulnerability and you report it to AWS in a matter of seconds, hours, days, or months, everyone is going to be patched. So actually, for me, I find more interesting to focus on misconfigurations, on features that can create vulnerabilities that finding CEs that once you give to the cloud provider is going to be patched everywhere. Usually, uh, there, there might be uh, edge cases, but usually they are going to be fixed everywhere in a matter of days at most. So I think that the future of cloud hacking Actually, you, you cannot see my screen. Why you cannot see my screen? And the future of cloud hacking, I think that is going to be, that is, um, I think that is going to be to find misconfigurations, um, to find things that even if you find them, AWS is going to tell you, no, this, this is okay. We, we are going to be seeing some of them along the way. Um, you're going to be able to exploit it in real, in real audience. I, I think that's, that's the future. Of, of cloud hacking and that's where I'm focusing my, my research on finding with features you can you can just abuse if you find them in place and if they are there by default if they are there by default that's just that's just awesome um, do you have any questions about how you can get started into hacking cloud SaaS do you have any questions about this this topic at all Hey, thank you, man. I, I I really appreciate that community use the tools and, and the things that I, I, I create. It's, that made my day every day. It's, it's pretty, I'm very grateful.
Um, yeah, also this, the cloud stuff gives you a lot of possibilities on what attackers do in post-exploitation phase. And that's something I'm starting to write about in, in, in hack tricks. I have started to create this persistence, or this Azure, let's get AWS. Persistence stuff. No, maybe here. So if we go, for example, to Lambda, persistence. Each service in cloud is going to have several permissions, features, things that will allow you to persist in more or less a stealth way. I think that's that's amazing. There are there are ways you can persist in some services on cloud that don't appear in logs, and potentially nobody is going to look into that. So that's great. And also um, in terms of mining, using other people's cloud infrastructure to create your own infrastructure and hack other stuff. Obviously, I'm not encouraging you to do that, but bad people, bad actors could do this. It's, it's a very, very interesting topic and companies should be aware of this to be able to limit what people can do in, in their cloud um, environments. Um, but yeah, I... I really hope this was helpful to you to, to get, get it started into, into cloud hacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can be, um, well, you can very, you can very easily tell the difference when, when you are penetrating cloud, you can very easily tell the difference when you're attacking the cloud provider and when you are attacking the, the, the client, your your client. Uh, first of all, most cloud providers will ask the client to send some kind of uh, warning that they are conducting some kind of fences. But for example, if you manage to compromise a web application that is running in an E2 instance, you know you are in a in a service being managed by the client. You know you are at that point you are not attacking directly the cloud provider. You are attacking a service managed by the client. But for example, something that that I have spent a, a couple of hours in and is very, very, very interesting. I have been trying to find vulnerabilities, for example, in the MySQL, in the manage MySQL server of AWS. If you manage to find a vulnerability in them and obviously report this to, to AWS and, and get into the underlying server running the MySQL instance, there, you're attacking the cloud provider. You are fully attacking the cloud provider. You are attacking an infrastructure that is managed by them. But as far as I understand, if you attack uh, a Lambda, an ECS, a container, an EC2 instance, things that are being created and managed by, by the client, you are not attacking the, the cloud provider, just, just, just the client, just the company. It gets weird, weird. Well, yeah, it, it's it gets weird, but it gets interesting because you are going to be able. Like I, I love lambdas. I love lambdas. If you get get first in a lambda, man, you you are going to be getting iron credentials. You are going to be going to be able to get other people's requests and modif and and get not only the sensitive information they are sending. Imagine a, a lambda where people is authenticating. You, you are going to be able to capture credentials but also to respond, the, to change the response they are receiving. Um, I think cloud is changing how, obviously, how companies have their infrastructure. It's making their potentially more, more secure because a lot of stuff is being directly being managed by AWS, but it's also increasing in other ways um, the, kind of, the kind of vulnerability they can have so the things that disappear from from a side uh, appear from from the other side let's, let's say that way so you, you really need to know how the cloud works to know how you can abuse um a service in the